This is crazy. Do you know how to make a lead noakum joint? Well, in this video, I'm gonna teach you some old school plumbing. Now, this is something I haven't done in quite a while, but it still comes in handy every now and then. Now, if you're an old school plumber and you still do a lead noakum joint every now and then, you may use something like this, a turbo torch. It's a way to heat up your lead, fire up your torch, turn it on, you've got a good flame. Well, I'm in Texas. We do things just a little bit different. So as you can see, we bust out the big dog. So as you see, it takes quite a bit of tools to do a lead and oakum joint. Now don't get me wrong, you don't have to have every one of these, but the very first plumber that I worked for, we did lead and oakum. And he had a toolbox that was three feet long, 12 inches wide, 12 inches tall, and he had probably twice as many of these tools in it, plus pipe wrenches and hammers and chisels and everything else. And I gotta tell you, it wasn't good because he parked a quarter mile down the road and I'm the one that had to carry the toolbox back and forth every day as his apprentice. But the good thing is, I learned how to use it. So you've got different packing irons, you've got different yarning irons, you've got offset irons another offset iron. You've got so many different things and you need to understand, it literally took a lot of these irons to do lead and oakum joints. Now there'll be a couple of plumbers that tell you, look, it, it only really takes an inside and an outside and a yarning iron. So the yarning irons and the one that we used to have had a notch in it about an inch up because you wanna pack oakum, which if you've never seen it, is this oily rope right here. Now, oakum is what actually seals off the joint. You pack it in tight, the lead packs everything in, holds everything where it goes, especially after you pour it and pack it in tight, it keeps everything from moving around. But then when this gets wet, it swells up and that's what seals the joint. And as you see, you've got different size ladles. Most plumbers these days that ever have to do a lead joint will take a turbo torch like I showed you, and they'll heat up the lead, heat up the ladle, anything like that to melt it down to where you can make one smooth, good pour. Another thing that they have, now this is an old one and this is a new one, but it's a running rope. And these were really neat. What you do is you put the running rope around your joint. So say you're doing a horizontal line. You put your running rope around that joint, pack it in, squeeze it so it goes around the pipe. Now don't get me wrong, I would probably cut this off, but this is a brand new one. We just got it, so I'm, I'm gonna leave it on there for now. You would put this around the pipe at the joint or the other fitting, whatever you're trying to join. Get it where it goes right around it there. You take your clip because this holds it together. Now, one thing that I learned is hold this and pull it in and it helps tighten it up. And as you can see, the teeth on here will let it slide a little bit, but tighten it up so you get it around there. But then I would take a hammer and go in and pack this in. Now, this is a new running rope. This is an old one work the same way. I kind of like this because this one is clipped at the very end, so that's a good thing. And as you see, my hands are already getting dirty. I will definitely put my gloves on before I pour my joint, but that's what a running rope is. Now, if you're doing a vertical joint, you don't need it because you're gonna pour the lead in, it's gonna fill to the top and it's gonna stop. But on a horizontal joint, you need something to hold the lead in because you're gonna pour it in that triangle that it'll make right there on the top. We'll show you that in a minute, even though we're not gonna do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and get some gloves on and we're gonna start getting this thing ready to go. So today, I'm gonna show you some different irons and these are what I'm gonna use. I've got some offset irons here. Now, this is great for, like you'll see, we're gonna do a sand tee on top of a Y. You may need to get under a fitting. So this offset iron is really, really good. Now, this is another offset iron. It's flat here, so you can come in at an angle if you need to get in and pack your lead from a different spot. Now, this is a great offset yarning iron, meaning you can literally pack your yarn in. You wanna make sure you pack it just as good up under fitting as anything else. And this could also, it's got a flat tip, so this could also be used to finish it off if you can't get in right under the fitting where you need to. Now, these are two that I really like. This is about a one inch offset yarning iron. So if you're working up on a piece of pipe, so you're pouring a horizontal joint and you may not have enough room to get up in there and see, you can get up there and pack your oakum in with this and know it's done right. Also, as you're packing a joint, I like that it's set at one inch because I was taught you leave one inch for lead. You pack your oakum in, you leave one inch for your lead joint. So your yarning iron here, you've got a couple of ladles, 
But then you've literally got an outside iron which pushes the lead towards the inside. And you've got an inside iron. And then this one here is flat. This is my finish iron. I tap this around it just to try to make everything look good. So what I was taught is you pack your lead towards the inside, then you go the inside and push everything down, then take your finishing iron and go around it. So I'm gonna get everything ready over here. We're gonna heat up some lead and we're gonna pour a joint. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set my Santee inside of my Y. So this would be in a situation where maybe I had a vertical line coming up and I needed to branch off. I'm gonna come up and catch a restroom here. Maybe I'm gonna go up another floor and catch another restroom and then revent above. So I know that where I want my fitting, so I'm gonna take my oakum and I'm literally gonna start putting it down in here. So what I'm gonna do is line everything up the way I want and the inside of the fittings are designed to where this sets right down in a groove where it's supposed to. So let me get my yarning iron and we'll start packing this in. Now I like this twisted oakum. It's twisted really well, it's nice and tight. There's nothing loose about it. I can always check, make sure my fitting is right where it's supposed to be. Now you can also use your iron as a level to kind of help push it back, make sure you get everything centered. Now I twist it to tighten it up, get it over where I want it. Now this is some good thick oakum. I'm probably only going to have to use one wrap, but I want to make sure that I overlap it. That way in the back I don't leave a hole that lead could go down in where it wouldn't fill up. And one thing that you can do once you get it in, you want to check your depth. So you want to make sure that you're packing it in and you get your oakum in good. Now, I'm going to come back and level everything up before I pour it and I know that I'm about where I want to be on depth coming around. Now, one thing I've done is I'll go ahead and take my final packing iron, mark it at one inch, that way I can go around and check. I want to be right at one inch all the way around. Now, I can be a little over, a little under, as long as the one inch mark is what I'm hitting for the most part. All right, so we've got everything good here the way we want it. If I was doing a horizontal pipe, I would put a running rope around it like this Pinch it down in there, put my clip on to hold it up as tight as I can right here because if this is horizontal, I can go through and just kind of tap my rope down all the way. That way I don't let any lead leak out. And then you see that triangle right there? That's where I would pour my lead in. So if this was horizontal, if this was flat and this was the top, I could pour my lead in right there and it's going to hold it up inside this hub. Now, this one's vertical just because we want to show you what we're doing here, but what a way to go. A few moments later. So I'm gonna clean off the top of this lead. You see all that junk right there? I really don't want that down in my joint. So I'm gonna pull all this slag, crap, junk, gradu, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna try and get every bit of this out. So we're gonna come over and we're gonna pour. You wanna be very careful. So here we go. Now one thing I like doing is I like pouring it in one smooth pour. I've seen people pour a little bit and then pour a little bit more. I want to know my leads together. It's one solid piece. We could literally cut this open right now and pull that out in one ring. But I'm going to let it cool down for just a second and then I'm going to start packing it. Okay, so I was taught to start with the outside iron. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to push the lead down and towards the inside. So I want to go as far as I can around the outside pushing my lead down inside there to where it'll pack it in tight. Remember the two offset irons we talked about a while ago? You can get this up under a fitting like this. Now, it's flat, so really you wanna hold it on the outside and angle it in and let it tap that lead down in there. So that gets it started, and as you see, it packed it down below the rim. Okay, so now I would go to my inside iron. So while I've still got my offset iron, I'm just gonna slide this right up against the pipe and help pack that down. Now I'm gonna take my inside iron, right up against the pipe, all the way around. Trying to pack it all in there nice and tight. So guys, this is old school plumbing. This is a lead and oakum joint. I wanted to do this because I literally got a message in my live the other night from a plumber saying they're not even allowed to carry solder fittings on their truck anymore. They do press on everything or push to connect. So here's what I would tell you. 
Make sure you understand how to do stuff like this. You may not always need to, but every now and then you might want to. It's nice to know where our trade came from. Anyway, lead and oakum. This is how we used to put everything together. I hope you got some value out of this, and if you know a plumber that maybe doesn't know anything about lead and oakum or might need to, do me a favor and tell them about me. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.